Hey, hi, hello, what's up? Welcome back with Oso oh, Me here. We're gonna be playing part three <laughs> of Beginner's Guide. I had to like stop and recall for a second because I never remember. But anyways, yes, we're back with Beginner's Guide part three. And um, so pretty much within the last couple chapters that we saw, it wasn't so, uh, it got a little bit heavier with the subjects that it talked about with like personal anxiety and depression and just you know isolation uh feelings of isolation more so and it's just it got really heavy and i honestly didn't expect it to you know sometimes when you play games when they talk about personal subjects such as that you don't really expect it to affect you as deeply as they do and i you know not gonna lie it affected me on a really personal level with the last couple chapters i'm kind of hoping that it's like I want it to. It's like I want it to keep doing that, but at the same time, I don't want to just because I'm not the kind of person that likes to make myself super vulnerable at will. But I mean, that speaks to how relatable the game can be, especially when dealing with um, your own insecurities and your own, you know, personal issues that you're dealing with on the inside that you don't want anyone else to know about. But I definitely think that makes it all the more, you know. It speaks out more to you as a person rather than, you know, oh, I like this game and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But then you really can get a feel, a sort of attachment to the game through that. And I think that that's cool that they, the, that they put that in there. And now we are down to the machine. We May 2011. Oh, I didn't even look to see how many, how long this was a time span line for. I'll look at it at the end of it just so I can make sure. But I know this is like I want to say this is the, what, almost two years since the first not the first but where I first started in the last one. I want to say this is like a two year gap or something like that. Maybe a year. I'm probably overestimating but I don't know. Guard. Ma'am, glad to see you arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. Um, I intend to be quick, quiet, or brutal. I intend to be quick. Oh wait, I can't do that there. I intend to be quick. Very good. <laughs> Just be warned, someone call the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. <gasps> I get to talk to Coda? I get to talk to- Wow. Um. Okay. Let me just- I forget my phone is like not on silent right now, so let me just put that on silent. There we go. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. Oh dear. This is press, 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 press. Oh, oh, okay, okay. All right, okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Jesus Christ. So what it feels like to be a celebrity? Is everybody all up in your face trying to ask you so many different questions? You stopped. And of course, it's the machine. This music, though. You stopped feeding us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy. So he's relating himself to a machine. He doesn't even see himself as a person anymore. Those people out there, can you imagine what pain you put them through? It's only because of your creations any of us can make it through every day. I could possibly go back to trusting you to do this job. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is... So here's what needs to happen. You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. You had to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. I've been so alone. Uh, I don't... I don't even know. Does he talk back? No, nothing. Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. I've seen the thing you fear. Oh my god! This is so... <sighs> this is so painful to do. Uh, just nothing. I don't want to say I'm going to hurt him. I mean, this is his game, so this is him basically saying this to himself in self-reflection. I will speak to them for you. Good gracious. Huh? What? Oh. 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 Um. Okay. Hi. 
my followers, my friends, um, um, friends. I don't, I don't want to say followers. They followed me to deliver bad news. I have a troubling revelation. Yes, let's say revelation. That way, they don't exactly know what I'm talking about. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refused to admit they really, really hurt us. Uh, it will not apologize. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Uh, not important. I don't. Let us let us pay it retribution. Let us show it we are not failures. Let's show it's not failures. I mean, this is kind of scary. The fact that he sees himself in this kind of perspective and that he just really just feels like he's just failed overall as a game creator. And that's... And it goes back to the whole thing of him making games, but he lost his inspiration and creativity for games. So he's just making games just to vent his feelings. And I'm just like... Where do you draw the line? Follow me, we'll destroy the machine, we'll destroy everything that machine has created. I don't want to do either one! I don't I don't want to destroy Coda and I don't want to destroy his creations, but that's still his work. But I mean I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just pressing buttons now, I don't know. Um And we're back on the stage. Okay. Oh! <gasps> no! 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 Wait, are the chairs moving? No. What's happening? I don't get it. I don't understand. I, why do I have a gun? Why do Remember, I have you can click to fire the gun. I don't want to fire the gun! Oh. oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! I'll make sure you work dice here. I'll make sure you go forever. Oh no! I'll make sure you know forever. I don't want Coda to die! I don't want all this horror to go to waste! Isn't that what you're scared of? Exposed to the view of others every day, forever, seen in naked clarity. Oh my god. This is. So now the work is becoming self destructive. Literally. I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people to get some actual feedback on his games it might get him out of isolation oh my so, god as i'm thinking this i realize that i could be the one to initiate it because it would never occur to coda to start actively soliciting feedback so what if i did it for him if he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Hmm. Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? Can we stop this terrible music? It's, it's scaring me. I feel like there's a dragon behind me. Oh my god, this is literally the most self-destructive thing you can do. He is literally destroying his work. Oh. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. Did they Coda know this? The point of it all is just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. Oh god, it's a dark space. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. But did Coda know that you did that? Did he want you to do that? Did you have his permission? He probably got overwhelmed by the whole thing. I don't know. Let's see what happens next. I just put down your weapon. Okay. I mean, I mean, I want to. I don't... <sighs> okay. He really doesn't want to. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't click anything, Coda. It's not my fault. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something 
I really felt like I'd done something good. Uh, like, uh. like I was a good person. I felt uh, like uh. there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, uh, uh. and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. This is so self-destructive. I don't totally like it. How much they enjoyed his games. It was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. Am I feeling. supposed to be shooting him, him or? So happy, so beautifully, beautifully happy. I don't know if I was supposed to be shooting him or not. It's not like I was getting anywhere, anyways. But so anyway. Okay. Coda finishes this game, and uh -huh. then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So but this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Okay. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. Okay. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. Oh, no. So let's take a look. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, this is terrifying. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It Where feels like it's the light trying coming to from? distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Yeah, this doesn't feel great. Where is the light coming from when there's no light source? What is that noise? Is that someone crying again? It doesn't sound like crying, or at least it doesn't sound like it's someone crying right there. Oh god, this is... This room actually has a maze in it. Oh, seriously? Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. Holy shit. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. Oh, great. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. You see. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter, and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Good grief. Okay, good grief. Ironically, it looks just like the walls from the Stanley Parable. Hmm. Oh my god, what is that? What is that noise? This is so... Oh my god, this is ridiculous. This is... This is very depressing. <laughs> And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. I'm sure. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I wouldn't mind you that. You had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Mm. What is this? Puzzle? Another puzzle? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Really? Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me, because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll mm -hmm. put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. One five one six one seven. This is the last of the super depressing, stressful games for a while. Can we please have like a nice, calm one, like the house cleaning one again? Because this is beyond depressing. Oh my god. I don't want to go down there! It's really loud down there. I really don't want to go down there. Do I have to go down there? Oh my god, I do. Ugh, okay. Oh, and there's one door. Great. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door. 
meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. Okay. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. Mm. And it's scary for me. The idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. Hmm. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Thanks. This is getting really sad. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I won't I mean, think I, so. I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. Mm -hmm. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. We're just trying to look out for Coda, and Coda's just going through his things. Mind you, if anyone's ever in a situation like this and they have a friend like Coda, and Coda just shuts himself off, and. Or, I'm sorry, a friend like Coda just shuts themselves off, and you're just trying to help, but they just keep doing more and more distant things, it's not your fault. You know, you can only do so much as a friend, but I if remember, they just. It's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. Oh no. I have no idea who this person is. Jeez. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. Mm. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I can't tell if that's a doorway or if that's a person standing there. It looks like I'm hoping that's a doorway because I'll be freaked out if that's a person standing there. But, like I was saying, you can only do so much as a friend for someone if they just feel like whatever they're going through, if they don't want to have you involved or they just don't feel like they want to trouble you, quote unquote. Like I said, you can be there for them as a support system, as a friend, but at the end of the day, if they just don't feel like you know, if they just don't feel like opening up, like I said, there's no point in pushing past what your limit as a friend is at that point. I'm not saying that you can't let them know, you know, hey, if you ever do want to talk, I'm here for you, yeah, 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 but that's kind of one of those things where, like, if you keep pushing on it, more than likely they're just going to distance themselves more because then they just feel like they're more of a nuisance. I don't know if that's for sure what's going on with Coda, but... I can almost personally relate just because I've done that to people in the past, but, you know, like I said, I don't know what Coda's going through, so I can't speak for Coda, and I can't speak for the guy here and what their situation is because I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't know the whole story, but this is very troubling. Like, this is beyond troubling. This is literally a cry for help. I have been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. Oh my god, I'm not the only one who thought that. I was wondering what the three dots were for because I kept seeing them and I'm like, what do the three dots mean? Are they still going to come back? Because they come up. I, I haven't seen them in here. If I have, I wasn't paying atten attention. I don't know what that is. But it's like a... I want to call it like a birthmark of every game. They all have a three dots. And I don't know what they mean. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed... To be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. I feel bad for him because he just wants to help his friend, but his friend doesn't Why really. Did I screw up? His friend just doesn't really want to be helped. And we're back here. Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in my games. I need to speak to you. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? I need to ask you not speak to me anymore. It's because of what I did. Aww. I poisoned it for you. 
Aww. That's why I was asking those questions like, did, Ko did Koda want you to do that? Did he give you that permission to share these games with you? Maybe... I'm going off on a limb here and saying that Koda might be that kind of person where he doesn't like sharing his creations with, you know, he doesn't just go out sharing his things with random people. He has to like actually have a connection, a relationship with them and actually feel like he can trust them and trust whatever their reaction is going to be. And that's probably why he showed all his games to him because he saw him as a friend and he's like, well, I know whatever he has to say about it. He's saying it as a friend. He's not saying it to be judgmental, but you know, and that's probably why he felt so comfortable even showing him the darker games that he made because he was just maybe he felt a little better just knowing that he could at least tell somebody even if he couldn't say it directly he could at least show him in the games that he was feeling some type of way and you know and then once he started feeling like oh this is such a good game I gotta show to someone else that's why I started getting worried I'm like you see this getting darker and darker and yet you think it's okay to show other people like did Koda want you to did you ask Koda did Koda want you to share that with other people you know and <sighs> it, I'm not gonna say it's his fault but that definitely made for a break in that trust that he had for him and he probably felt you know back to square one with the isolation that he felt from prior to meeting him I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. <sighs> You're so infected. You so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions to my work somewhere hidden between games. Hmm. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For but a then... moment, while I had that... I liked myself. If there was an answer or meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? So at that point, him showing it to people, it wasn't even about Coda anymore. He just did it for his own self-gratification. Which now I'm starting to get a little upset at the narrator right now because not only did you go against your friend's wishes and do it against so it sounds like Coda specifically told him not to do that and he did it anyways and then he kept doing it knowing Coda didn't want him to because he liked how people were reacting to it to him even though he knew it wasn't his game nor was it something that he was supposed to do and it's just like I'm like I guess I'm not gonna completely put him at fault because we're all people we're all human you know we do dumb things sometimes sometimes we do stuff we're not supposed to do knowing we're not supposed to do it but it's like like I said you know your friend is going through something you know he's showing this to you because he trusts you as a friend and then you purposely take that trust and break it for your own self-gratification that's bothersome to me Giving them something that's not yours to give, violating the one boundary that keeps me safe. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lamp posts to them? Wait, would you simply let you them stop. know what they are? And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Mm. Less than nothing. Oh, jeez. When I'm around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something. I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. 
low points are just a part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. Oh my. Oh wow. Okay. I realize this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you're wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I'm talking about, don't say anything. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, mm -hmm. is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my wow. name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. Is it getting bigger? If I apologize to you truly and deeply, oh. Shit. Will you start making games again? Please. I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always wow. felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. Wow. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Wow. Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I wow. can't stop myself from doing it. That's how wow. badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There wow. has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Wow. 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 Is that the end, or is there more? Because I don't know how much more I can take of this, honestly. Epilogue. Okay, now we're at the end of the game. Oh my god. Oh, what is this now? Is this a building? Oh, in a train station. So now it's revealed that pretty much our interpretation of this entire series of going through these games has been manipulated. More, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. I can't get out of here, can it's like I? A disease. So, Coda's not the one that had an issue. It's the narrator. And he took all that attention off from him, made it into Coda, and made it seem like there was something wrong with Coda, when in reality, Coda is perfectly fine. It's the narrator that has these issues. Maybe Coda in some way was trying to self-reflect whatever he's going through into his games but didn't want to make it obvious that he was talking about him. So he just kind of, you know, so he was kind of self-inserted himself so that way he could speak to him without making it obvious that he was talking about him. But now, being at the end of this game, I'm... I feel angry. Not gonna lie, I feel angry. I mean, not like furious or anything, but it's like... I don't like going through a game and having my entire interpretation of it be at fault because that wasn't because I was told one thing throughout the entirety of it and then you get to the end and it turns out something completely different. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad that it brought out that emotion out of me. 
but at the same time it's just like I'm almost feeling like how dare you kind of solution 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 okay So maybe this was Koda's way of just getting him to just I guess if someone okay. had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Yeah, that's really maybe insulting. He just likes making prisons. Maybe he does. Maybe he just likes making dark games, and I feel insulted for Coda. Because you made me think that this, that there was something wrong with this person, and it turns out he's perfectly fine. He just manipulated everything I interpreted of the game. It made me feel like it's like having someone tell you that somebody is like terribly sick in the head, that they're going through some sort of mental is mental issue, that they're having some sort of mental, you know. I'm not gonna say illness, but like they're just like really depressed or they're just really sad or they could even be at the point where they're about to hurt themselves or something. And then you're just believing everything that they're telling you because it's like it's such extreme news. So it's like, okay, well, you know, you gotta have some emotion to it. You gotta have some sort of reaction to it. And then the other person comes in and they're like, what are you talking about? He's the guy with the issue. It's just like, oh, okay. Like, you know, you feel some type of way. <laughs> At this point, I'm, I'm almost literally done with this game. I'm... Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. Mm. They'll hate you. I don't hate you, but I wish you would have came clean from the beginning. Oh, it's just gonna bring me back around and yep. Gotta go through the shit, buddy. Gats to. Oh, this is dark. It's changing. Something's up. Oh. Oh, where are we? What the hell is this? If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? I can't tell you. It's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. So, you're telling me the only way you would feel validated or even accomplished in life is through other people's like perceptions of you and their affirmations towards you and that's kind of messed up that's kind of a what what would you what do you even call that's kind of an empty life having your life fulfillment decided by other people's satisfaction or gratification towards you that's pretty artificial it's pretty that's what i'm looking for Aesthetic. That's that's an aesthetic life. There's no fulfillment behind that. <sighs> Jeez. What now? Maybe you should find yourself, give yourself some passion for something that you can be proud of, not through other people's. I think I need to go. Say so. And I'm sorry, cause. I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna. Hmm. Yeah. Probably should okay. leave. No? Not leaving? Okay, he is leaving. Okay. That's fine. It's probably meant to be easy to get around at this point, anyways. Just so you can have some self-reflection. Wow. The 
this is like so surreal that kind of speaks to Koda as a friend though it's like the fact that he like acknowledges the fact that the person narrating this whole thing granted he manipulated our entire journey through this entire thing thinking it was something that it wasn't but at the same time Koda's just trying to get him to realize you can't find yourself through me and my games I that's something that you have to do and you can't get your validation showing off my work to other people even when I told you specifically not to and he's just I guess he's trying to make him have some sort of self-reflection through this back to the hole all right back to the hole Full of anticipation. Oh, I can't jump. Whee! Oh, not yet. Not yet. Alright. I forgot I could jump throughout the entire thing. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh wait, we're back at the train station. So, it was a journey. Would you call this a journey? back at that beam the self-sacrifice beam hmm. is he gonna come back at all or is it just me is it just me the whole time what okay I'm gonna keep moving cuz I don't know what that is oh that's outside okay it's 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 a storm okay I think Now it sounds like an airplane. It doesn't even sound like a storm, it sounds like an airplane. So we're back at this beam, which was back from one of the first games that you showed us in the beginning, so... Are we going to sacrifice ourselves now? <sighs> Ow. And off we go. Hmm? No? No self floatiness. Oh. Ooh. What? 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 Oh. Oh. My. God. Huh. Wow. 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 I don't even... I don't even... I take it this is just more... self-reflection, so to speak. So that's definitely the end of the game. You said, Let this project would not have been possible without the following way. individuals. Aw. Okay, so yeah, this is the end of the game. And I liked it a lot. And turn back. <laughs> um, I don't even know what to say say towards this game. It's definitely a very different type of game than Stanley Parables was. I mean, Stanley Parables, it had some deep thought moments and everything like that, but at the same time, it was more so with a much more light air um, atmosphere to it. It was just more of like a, we won't have you think too heavily about it. It's just, it's, we're going to present it real quick and then you can interpret from it what you will. This kind of thing, though, this game, 
Oh, is there more? No, okay, that's the end. Okay. This game, my god. I kind of like games like that, though, where you have this idea of how the game is and towards the beginning, and then as you get further and further into it, towards the end. Not gonna lie, it kind of reminds me of the ending of uh, Oxenfree, for those who have not seen the game. Um, it's a really good game, but I do have my playthrough of it. It was like, mind you, it was the first game I played on my channel, so it's not gonna be with the same kind of um, quality. Not saying I got top quality videos or nothing like that, but I mean, I definitely I've gotten better at making my videos. But um, if you want to see my playthrough of it, it's um, in my playlist. Literally the first game I played on my channel. But um, spoiler alert! So if you haven't played it, you haven't finished it, don't listen for this next part. But with my ending of it, um, you know, it's pretty much a continuous time loop with how the game goes. And towards the end, you know, she's talking about, you know, they're all doing their own thing. And then the dialogue starts getting back familiar. And then it kind of has that, um, that tape effect on it again you're just like hold up wait a minute wait 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 then it starts getting really familiar again and then it goes back to the beginning dialogue prior to when the game starts and i'm just like are you serious it's like she goes through this whole thing all over again i'm just like really not saying that this is the exact same thing that happened here but it's it throws you for such a loop at the end and you know you, you feel some type of way like I said with you thinking that you know this is him telling about his friend and he clearly needs help and it's you know had 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 he not said any of that I would have just thought that maybe okay he just really likes you know making these creepy games or these off the wall kind of games I wouldn't have thought there was anything more to it behind it but with him narrating it and making you think that his friend is in some sort of depression state or in some sort of trouble you know then you start being like oh man this is terrible this is so dark this is so sad and then you get to the end and then code is just like i'm not the one with the problem you are and it's like holy shit like i feel pissed <laughs> like i said before i feel pissed i feel lied to I feel like I was manipulated but like I said I like that this game gets such a reaction out of you and he did the job well making it feel like that and I guess I can see why it's called the beginner's guy because you know it's like how you start like the beginning um like not beginning but like um you do like easy mode for games and it kind of shows you like okay this is what you gotta do for this and this and that and it kind of walks you through it and with that tutorial it gives you an idea of how the game goes which you know is what it is in easy mode you're pretty much told to interpret it in a certain type of way versus in like normal mode or hard mode you know you're kind of thrown into it and you gotta you know figure it out for yourself so to speak and Wow, that was not much of a beginner's guide, more so of a, you have no idea what's going on. But, I mean, it's definitely fitting, and it's, oh my god, I'm just, I, that game took a lot out of me. <laughs> and I just feel like, wow, okay. But then that kind of questions the whole thing of, when Koda was saying, will you stop putting lampposts in it? So I'm just like, is he saying if he were to keep making the same games as Koda, would he not put lampposts in it? Or was he saying that the lamppost part was Davy putting like little things into it to further back up his inter- of uh, not interpretation, his putting pretty much backing up his story of what he was saying with Koda having, you know, this trouble and having this issue and blah blah blah. So that makes me kinda wonder, was Davy kind of putting stuff into Coda's games to back up his story of Coda going through said things. I mean, we already know he has because, you know, then he's like, you know, just click this and this to go past this and blah, blah, blah. So it makes me wonder how much of the actual games 
Davey actually interfered with to further, you know, keep the player, us, manipulated into his story of thinking that there's something wrong with Coda. And that's just like, man, man, oh man, oh man. But uh, overall, great game. I'm, you know, like I said, I, I played Stanley Perry, but I was already a big fan of that, and I knew this game was probably gonna get at me too. I'm kind of glad it was like a totally different game, because like I said, I like when game creators can, you know, have one great game, but then they have another great game, but, to but for totally different reasons, and that's that in itself is awesome. But uh, that was the end of the beginner's guide, and uh, yep, and um, I'm probably gonna try to do Layers of Fear, and I'm contemplating adding another game to my series. I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm gonna finish the games that I have on my channel already, or just keep adding more stuff as I see them, because, I mean, I get more interested in newer stuff half the time than going back and trying to finish the other stuff, but I don't know. You guys will see. And, uh, thank you guys again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys again next time. Okay, bye!